I think that there's a substantial portion of the left and the center who know exactly what they're getting with Joe Biden. They're not expecting him to be the next FDR or, you know, some type of progressive powerhouse. You know what to expect with Joe Biden because we have an extensive history of the way that he is governed. He's basically a moderate Republican. And for some people, that's good enough, right? Just not being Donald Trump, not being as extreme and openly racist and fascistic as Donald Trump to them is good enough. And sure, that's an improvement. But the problem is that what we're getting with Joe Biden is going to be a really deeply troubling pro-corporate neoliberal administration, perhaps more so than previous Democratic administrations. I mean, first and foremost, you have to consider who the Democrats are getting in bed with throughout the course of this election cycle. I mean, we see the rise of the Lincoln Project, which is ex-Bush administration officials, most of which should be in prison for crimes against humanity because of their involvement with the Iraq War. And I mean, as Emma Viglin, I think, rightfully pointed out on Twitter, you know, we should worry that this Lincoln Project nonsense is a Trojan horse to get Republicans into Biden's administration. Because if they help him get elected, then he's going to want to reward them with spots in his administration and therefore they'll be able to influence him. So, I mean, what we see is kind of this devolution of the Democratic Party as Republicans move further to the right and become more extreme. The Democrats are kind of trying to take on what more moderate elements the Republican Party is leaving behind. So we're going to see like this weird unholy alliance between liberal Democrats and Bush era neoconservatives. And together, they don't disagree on that much. They may disagree on, you know, cultural issues and social issues. But when it comes to free market capitalism and neoliberalism, they're in lockstep. So I I'm I'm hoping for the best, but I'm expecting the worst. I mean, Here's the thing. If Joe Biden is elected and he does as poorly as Obama did in terms of not really improving the material conditions in this country after four years or eight years of Joe Biden, what is that going to lead to? I mean, we saw how eight years of Obama led to so much desperation that people became radicalized and they elected a clown like Donald Trump. So what's next? I fear someone more dangerous, like Tom Cotton. And I'm not making an accelerationist argument. I don't believe that four more years of Donald Trump is preferable. I disagree with that notion. But what I am saying is that unless we have a president who's going to step up and actually change the conditions in this country, reverse the course, like this trajectory of late stage capitalism that is leading us to our demise as a nation, then things are going to continue to deteriorate in this country. And we have a sign that Joe Biden is, in fact, going to continue business as usual. And David Sirota, former speechwriter for Bernie Sanders, points this out in a newsletter. He says, two weeks ago, Joe Biden rightly received praise for creating policy task forces that released a package of progressive legislative initiatives. The proposals augmented Biden's previous legislative initiatives to change corporate behavior. The task forces were meant to unify the Democratic Party after the primary and their recommendations were blared all over the world in glowing headlines promising an era of progressive change under a Biden administration. Then, this past Monday, Biden told his Wall Street donors that Actually, he is not proposing any new legislation to rein in corporate power or change corporate behavior. And this was reported exactly nowhere, even as his campaign blasted it out to the national press corps. You don't have to believe me. You can click here to read the full poll report that the Biden campaign distributed the press after his teleconference fundraiser. And I'll link that uh, down below. That event was headlined by John Gray, a top executive at the Blackstone Group, which is a private equity behemoth at the center of the climate, healthcare, housing, and pension crises. Blackstone executives had already donated $130,000 to the Biden campaign and $350,000 to a super PAC supporting him. Here's the relevant section reviewing what Biden said. Second question, again from Mr. Gray, who noted that there are a bunch of business leaders on the line. What do you think is essential to get this economy rolling again? Quote, I come from the corporate state of American. Many of you incorporated here, said Mr. Biden. It used to be that corporate America had a sense of responsibility beyond just CEO salaries and shareholders. Corporate America has to change its ways. It's not going to require legislation. I'm not proposing any. We've got to think about how we deal people back in. There's an obvious contradiction here. 
Before making these comments, Biden had previously promised to pass legislative initiatives to change corporate behavior on everything from climate change to tax policy. He has an entire section of his website outlining promises to pass corporate accountability legislation. He has received praise for these kind of promises, but now he's telling his donors they can rest assured that legislation to change corporate behavior is not forthcoming. Indeed, read Biden's comment again. It's not going to require legislation. I'm not proposing any. So do you understand the problem here? Like, my issue with people who are advocating for Joe Biden is that they're trying to set up this expectation that doesn't mirror reality. Like, it's not reflective of Joe Biden's history. Well, Joe Biden, you know, if you look at his website, this is one of the most progressive platforms in American history. Except this wasn't written by Joe Biden. It's written by consultants. And he doesn't even know what's on his website. Like, I'm not even going to accuse him of lying and flip-flopping because there's no way he even knows that there's uh, legislation on his website to rein in the uh, abuse of corporate America. So it's just, this is deeply frustrating because if we are lucky enough to oust Donald Trump in November, then we get Joe Biden and down the line, if we don't actually correct all of the issues that led to Donald Trump in the first place, then we're going to get someone who's worse. Someone who's actually effective at carrying out fascism and who's more authoritarian. Tom Cotton, Matt Gates. these are individuals who ideologically, they are aligned with Donald Trump. But Donald Trump, the difference between them and him, like the difference between Tom Cotton and Donald Trump, for example, is that Donald Trump doesn't know what he's doing. Whereas Tom Cotton is much more calculative. He knows exactly what he's doing. And that's frustrating. That's scary. Like, this isn't just about getting rid of Donald Trump. And that's what I think that a lot of people miss. This is going to require fundamental changes that go beyond electoral politics, like who we elect. We need to completely transform this country and the institutions if we truly love this country and want it to survive. Because what we're doing is more of the same that has led to people becoming more and more uh, economically depressed, more materially deprived. And as this happens, people become more and more radicalized and extreme. And sometimes radicalization is a good thing. Like if you become more radicalized and you know, you're know you left leaning and you're just, you're committed to Medicare for all, that's good. But oftentimes people get preyed upon by demagogues like Donald Trump or Tom Cotton, right? And they could be radicalized in the opposite direction. So, I mean, look, the situation in America, even if we defeat Donald Trump on November 3rd, that doesn't mean that the work is done. You know, the threat of a total collapse of this regime isn't just gone. Like, this effort is so tremendous. I genuinely don't know if it's too late. Like, I don't know if we can salvage this, right? The country might just be too polarized. Both parties might just be too far gone and too sold out to special interests to actually want to make a difference. So I don't know what the implications of that are. I don't know what to expect. But what I do know is that if we don't actually get change in this country, then we will continue down this path. And it's not just going to remain equally bad, like as shitty as it is now, the situation will continue to deteriorate. So I hope that people don't take this as, you know, a message of, well, I should just be depressed. Nothing is ever going to change. This should be a call to action to you. If you hear what I'm saying and it makes you feel discouraged, then use this as the fuel to light the fire that gets you involved and you go beyond electoral politics. You actually take direct action. And I know there's not too much we can do during a pandemic. I get that. But I need you to understand that mobilization on a mass level is what will be required to save this country. It's not going to be waiting and hoping that Democrats do the right thing because they're not. And if they have an instinct to do the right thing, they have a lot of other interests beside you in their ears telling them to do the wrong thing. So we have to understand the scale of what is required and we have to take appropriate action. That means we take to the streets, we have sit-ins and we demand Medicare for all and we don't leave until we get it. We have to do what is necessary to save the country. Because if we continue down this trajectory of neoliberalism and more late-stage capitalism, where corporate America dictates our policies, then it's going to be worse and worse. And the next fascist who comes along will be much more worse than Donald Trump because he or she might actually be effective at carrying out their fascistic agenda. You know, 
you 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 know <laughs> you know the you know the thing thing you're getting nervous man man